Computer World by Kraftwerk here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting on 700 stations on Pacifica and NPR and Low Power FM and college and community radio stations on public access TV and PBS TV stations and both TV satellite networks. On Dish Network, channel 9415 Free Speech TV, 9410 Link TV, and on Direct TV, channel 375. And we're video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. Our headlines also available in Spanish for any radio station to take in audio and in transcript form on our website. Well, all five Federal Communications Commissioners are holding a public hearing here in Stanford University today to discuss discuss net neutrality and what rules should govern high-speed internet networks. Net neutrality is the principle that all internet sites should be equally accessible to any web user. The event is part of the FCC's ongoing investigation into the blocking of web traffic by Comcast. The cable giants accused of disrupting video traffic uploaded by users of the BitTorrent peer-to-peer -peer network. The investigation comes in response to a complaint filed by the media reform group Free Press and a coalition of public interest organizations. The commission all already held one public hearing in February at Harvard University. Comcast was later forced to admit it paid people to fill seats at that hearing. Harvard said dozens of genuine participants were forced to stand outside the hearing, unable to participate. Today's hearing will take place at 12 noon at Stanford University. Among those attending will be the prominent Stanford law professor Lawrence Lessig, one of the world's leading figures in the field of cyber law. He's the founder and co-director of the Stanford Law School Center for Internet and Society and chair of the Creative Commons Project. His most recent project is called Change Congress. Lawrence Lessig joins us today here in the Stanford University studio. Welcome to Democracy Now! Very glad to be here. Talk about today's hearing and the significance of it, the issues that the FCC is taking on. Well, the FCC is confronting the fact, first, that broadband development in America has been wildly inferior relative to other competitive nations. Um, we've got uh, very poor access and service relative to our competitors, and that's a problem produced largely by bad policy at the federal level. Um, so the particular issue at stake now is whether network owners who've become fewer and fewer as the reach of their networks has grown and the monopoly power of the networks have grown, will have the power to pick and choose which content and which applications run on their network. The way the internet was originally built, it was made such that the network owners would have no such power, no such control, because it was architected to give all the power to people at the edge of the network, people using the network. But what they've done is build technologies in the center of the network to give them the ability to decide which kind of packets or which kind of applications work and which kinds don't, which messages they like, which ones they don't. Um, and the whole issue about network neutrality is whether the government will allow them to exercise the technical power to begin to control what kind of network uh, will develop. So explain what Comcast exactly is doing. Well, one problem is we don't really know. They've not been straight with us about what they were doing. Uh, what happened in this particular instance is that there was an allegation that they were blocking BitTorrent traffic, which is a traffic related to peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. So when you have large files and you want to distribute them um, on the Internet, one very efficient way to do it is to do it with peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning many people are sharing the bandwidth uh, to distribute it. Now, Comcast was alleged to be blocking this traffic, and initially they said they weren't. They repeatedly said they weren't. Um, and then when it was essentially proven that they were blocking the traffic, then they said, well, we're not blocking the traffic, we're just slowing the traffic. And they were doing so by inserting little messages in the Internet traffic to confuse the recipient and the person sending um, to basically disrupt the traffic. Now, one important fact about this is that they just weren't straight. That it took forever to get them to admit what, in fact, they were doing. Secondly, they were doing something with most, most network technologists would say has nothing to do with really preserving the efficiency of the network, but, really, but is instead about being able to exercise control over what happens on their network. Uh -huh. What about high definition and being able to bring it into your computer? Well, the, well whether you can do that will depend upon, um, uh, first, the bandwidth that's available, and secondly, whether the cable company that's serving you will permit it. Now, here's exactly the problem. Um, if your computer can begin to be a high bandwidth uh, video device, um, it competes pretty directly with 
video service that you're paying for from a cable company. So you can understand how a cable company who's providing you internet service might think twice before they allow that internet service to become a competitor with HBO or with the other cable things that you have to pay for. So this has been the constant concern. If the, ca if the, if the owners of the wires get to muck about with the kinds of content that come across the wires, then they might block competition that's valuable both because it's increasing the diversity of content available and also because it's enabling new kinds of applications to come onto the network. Perhaps part of what's difficult for pe how people can get involved in the debate is just the terms. Yeah. What exactly does net neutrality mean? Yeah. It means uh, it, it's something that should be very familiar. Think about the electricity grid. Right? When you plug a television into the electricity grid, it doesn't ask, is it a Sony television or a Panasonic television? It doesn't ask, is it a toaster made in America or a toaster made in Japan? It just runs. It just works. And that's because the electricity grid is a neutral network in this sense. You comply with the protocols, what the plug's got to look like and how much power you're taking, and it runs. That's the way the Internet was. It used to be, it didn't matter whether it was a browser made by Microsoft or a browser made by Netscape or a browser made by Mozilla. Um, it just ran because the protocols said if you follow the rules, the system will run. What's happening now is it's as if the electricity company, PG&E, was beginning to control what you could plug into the electricity grid, deciding which televisions it would allow and, and basically selling the right to be a television on the electricity grid. So they say, um, for example, if you want to have Internet content, <laughs> on our platform, you're going to have to pay us to have internet content on your platform. So it's not about the consumer having the power to choose whatever the consumer watch it, wants to watch. It's about whether the network owner also wants to make this available to the consumer. So it radically changes what the internet is and makes it something much less vibrant and potential for democracy and, and free speech. Professor Lessig, I went to the Googleplex the other day, uh, to uh, the Google, Google headquarters um, in Mountain View. Can you talk about the enormous growth of this company? Well, so it's hard to remember that a decade ago, basically, this company didn't exist. It starts as an experiment here at Stanford. Um, uh, and what this company did was... What do you mean an experiment at Stanford? Well, there's a bunch of grad students at Stanford who began to think about a different way to run a search engine. So the very first Google pages have at the bottom copyright Stanford University. It was a Stanford project. Then they obviously went off and turned it into the most successful Internet business so far. What they've done is exactly the vision of, of how value gets produced in the 21st century. They figured a way to add value to what other people had produced out there. So the Internet search engine, Google, um, takes content that's out there on the web and organizes it in a way that makes, it, makes the information much more valuable than it otherwise would. And they've built a team of the most innovative technologists who've constantly developed um, uh, radically new ways to take advantage of the potential of the Internet. Now, it's because at no stage did they have to ask permission from the network owner that they've been able to do this. If at the very beginning, Larry Page, Sergey Brin and Larry Page have had to, had to go to the existing network owners at the time, um, AT&T, for example, and say, may we develop this new technology for your network, it would have taken years for the company, AT&T, to even figure out whether this was going to be permitted. Just like if they'd gone to a cable company and said, we want to open a new cable station on your, on your network, it would take forever to get that, uh, get that permission. What the Internet did for most of its history was say to innovators, if you build the, ne the, the next great mousetrap, it'll run on our network. And what's happening now is the network owners are basically saying, no, we want the right to say whether something can run on a network or not. Now, trust us, we'll, we'll pick the best applications and we'll make sure that it's the right mix of speech. But what Comcast has demonstrated right here is there's no way to trust them. You trust them, they uh, misrepresent what in fact they're doing, they engage in behavior which is contrary to their representation of what they're doing about leaving an open network. And that's why it's become critical that the FCC set a very clear principle here that they want a network, an Internet network, that's consistent with the way it's been from the very beginning, open and neutral and free. Are you concerned about the amount of personal information that Google has? 
Uh, I am, and I think, I think Google is too, because I think Google, uh, like any company that needs to continue to compete, uh, needs a very credible way to represent to the world that, it's doing, uh, that what it's doing with data is things people ought to be able to trust. Um, so it has a very strong interest in, in maintaining